Hi everyone, I'm Jordan Allison with Fishing Boats Division Environmental Services and we're out here today working on a, one of our special projects which is a restoration, muscle restoration project that's the result of a bridge replacement project uh, in 2015. So as you can see, some of our biologists behind us are doing excavation in the creek bottom looking for mussels that we stocked in 2016. So there are several endangered species which we uh, were historically known from the Shenango River including the club shell, the northern ripple shell, um, and we're out here today in an effort to try to restore those populations which have not been seen here for quite, quite some time. It's been almost 100 years since the northern ripple shell has been found here and the club shell only remains in small numbers mostly downstream of our current location. Hi everybody, I'm Josh uh, from Fish and Boats Division of Environmental Services. So today what we're going to do is we're actually having divers in the water go and collect mussels from uh, the transect lines. So what Josh is going to do is he's going to put on his mask of snorkel, gloves, and knee pads, and he's going to use a quadrat, which is a known area, which is a quarter square meter, and he's going to go along the transect line that you saw us lay out earlier. Which has different colors and lengths on it. And what we've done is we've randomly selected different colors and lengths along this line in order to put the quadrat down and he'll excavate all of the, uh, the material from the stream bottom inside the quad into one of these bags. And that would include the gravels, the sands, everything as well as the mussels that are living in that habitat. So now that we've gone through the equipment, let's go down and look at the actual transect to where we're going to be starting to snorkel. So what he's doing now is he's placing the quadrat on the pre-selected uh, color and he's going to actually begin excavating out the stream bed with his hands. So as you can see, he puts the bag over the bottom of the quad and then he scrapes all the sand down to about four inches below the stream surface, which is about how deep mussels will live or the majority of mussels live into the bag. And once he gets that done, he'll pick the bag up and we'll take it back over to the sieving station and we'll look to see if he found anything. Tag? Thank you. Yeah. So each one of these tags is labeled and I'll show it to you when we get over to the sieving station, specifically with the uh, transect number, the segment and the color that we just uh, did the excavation for. So let's head on over to the sieving table and we'll see if we found any mussels. So now we take the sample that Josh just gave us that he dug out of the river, put it on this too. And we look to see whether we found any mussels, and it appears that we have. So, we definitely have two mussels here. Here, Ron, you want to hold them? Actually, we have three. So these are all kidding, these are all three ridges. What we do is we go through and we try to wash all the substrate off the bigger gravels. Because really what we're trying to do today is we're trying to find evidence of natural reproduction for mussels that we stocked here from the Hunter Station Bridge Project in 2015 and 2016. So we're really looking for little juvenile mussels which would be much smaller than these larger adults. So now that we've gone through and actually dug the quadrat, it's time to take the data for the mussels that we collected from sieving. So what we're actually going through here is, is that Nevin is going to be measuring and IDing the mussels that we were taking out of the bags that we put them in previously. So go ahead, tell me the transect, guys. Transect is six, seven, pink. And Nevin has two muscles to measure. All right, so I have a three ridge, and I'm gonna measure it. It is 116 millimeters long. Okay. There's another three ridge. And it is 117 millimeters. Very close. Next transect. Okay. Five, six, pink. Okay. We have a three ridge. It is 109 millimeters long. Okay. We have a round pig toe. It is 82 millimeters. Okay. And last but not least, we have a three ridge. And this one 
is 110 millimeters and next transect 13 6 blue what I do when I measure the muscles I look at what's called the hinge right here and I'm measuring the distance longest that is parallel or the longest distance parallel to the hinge that's 106 millimeters okay and we have a club shell uh, state and federally endangered species that was stocked and it is 52 millimeters 52 and what color is the green glitter what is it, it green it's green okay yes. so the green glitter signifies that it was stocked as part of the bridge restoration project, excuse me the bridge removal project in 2016. All right, these are uh, an example of the pit tag mussels that we've actually stocked in the river here. And this gray area of what looks like silly putty is the pit tag mussel that's been encapsulated with underwater epoxy. Now what a pit tag actually is, is a passive integrated transponder tag, is this little glass encapsulated copper tag here. And what it does is it sends out a radio signal to our pit tag reader, and our pit tag reader then reads the unique 16 digit number, which just allows us to track individuals through a through time so it's actually really similar to something like easy pass in your car so how it keeps track of you so what we do with the pit tag numbers though is that since we stocked these muscles five years ago and we've in some instances gone back and recaptured them multiple times we can look in at how much they've grown between the recapture intervals um, how well they survived during that time and it just gives us a, a unique opportunity to track individual muscles through time using this technology which we don't always have available to us but was um, was a Definitely a possibility with PennDOT providing the funding for this project uh, in, two, in 2015. This is the pit tag reader, the instrument that we use to, um, to read the uh, tags that we showed you on the muscle previously. And essentially what we have here is a computer that actually logs the number, the GPS coordinates, and um, the date and time for the tag when it reads it. And we also have this part, which is the antenna which is what sends out the radio signal that activates the tag. So if Nevin, if you would like to go ahead and scan the first muscle, we can see that then you have the unique identification number here, which that's what we use to track these muscles through time.